Coming up on Bryan Sports Center, we got our Bulldogs taking on the St. Francis Red Flash. We also got women's basketball facing the Iona Gales for the first ever meeting. Also coming up, we got the men's and women's sw swimming as they uh, took on state rival Providence College as records are broken. We also have the 2011 Bryan Hall of Fame and inductees, which is a huge deal. We also got an interview with Jordan Harris. Hi, and welcome to the first ever episode of Bryan Sports Center. I'm Chad Sabo, alongside my partner. Nicolette Riccio. And uh, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty excited for this. I am very excited, actually. Yeah. You know, I yeah. didn't have Sports Center kind of thing back in my high school. We oh, had, really? We had a broadcast journalism class yeah. kind of thing, but it wasn't like an after school thing, and yeah. so kids weren't really that into it, and it wasn't all about sports. Right. We didn't actually really even talk about sports. Oh, well, our that kind of our sports teams <laughs> were. Not that not good, so but good. I'm not yeah. going to talk well, much This is kind of like perfect timing with uh, Brian moving on to D1 and everything, so yeah. it's kind of a huge deal doing the show and everything. I'm We're talking about all these D1 sports. So right, we got swimming, like we football, have all new we got basketball, on. we got a lot of things going on. We have on a variety there, so. of sports here. It's actually pretty good. Oh, yeah. So and they're pretty good. We're improving every year, too, so it's going to be amazing where we are in 20 I'm, years. So Right? We I'm pretty here, I know we will not be here if we are. There's a problem. But So on the topic of sports, then, what sports are you interested in here? Uh, football, I'm a huge fan of football here, and um, basketball too, so later on I'll be talking about women's basketball, so what do you got for us today? Uh, well, today I'm talking about the swimming uh, for men's and women's, and I'm talking about the football team and the hall induction, but oh, nice. sports yeah. that I personally like to watch, I like hockey and football. Hockey and football are your big those, sports? Yeah. Those are my big sports. I used to play soccer and basketball when I was younger, but you know, I, I mean, they're, like, yeah. they're, fun, they're fun to watch. Oh, I, yeah. know, like, I give them props, like they are gigantic people <laughs> to do yeah. that I mean I can't <laughs> but I will I will prefer hockey and football any day nice. yeah I'm a I'm a huge sports fan over over all around uh I'm a Miami Dolphin fan though I'm not doing too well this year but well I mean when have hey. they ever been um but why don't you take it away and uh, we can start the show let's talk college football now last Saturday Bryant went head-to-head -head against the St. Francis Red Flash we'll take you to the turf to show you more Eight minutes into the first quarter of the game, with a first and ten, Jordan Brown makes a 15-yard run touchdown, giving the Bulldogs a lead, 7-10. to Alberti's extra point is good. Later in the first quarter, Crow makes a pass to Tracy at the 20, runs to the 10, and ditches Jules to the ground at the third. The play resulted in a 19-yard field goal from Alberti. Bulldogs up, 10 and up. Bulldogs first and 10 from their own 38. Crow to the ground, 62-yard run for a Bryant lead. 17-0. St. Francis with a fair catch at Bryant's 47. Quarterback John Kelly fake handoff, picked up first down. St. Francis third and eight. Kelly kicked out of bounds into the kicking net. 15-yard penalty leads the Red Flash to score a touchdown. Score now 17-7. Siobhan Lawrence has his first catch of the season, 61 yards down at the nine. First and 10, Bryant's 11 touchdowns. Keon Wade up the middle, untouched for a St. Francis touchdown. Brian gets the handoff, Bulldogs up 24 to 7. 35 seconds left in the half, Kelly passes to Housie for the St. Francis touchdown, 24 14 into the half. Third quarter, Crow to Wilson. Wilson leaps into the end zone to the score, 31 14. St. Francis follows up with two big touchdowns. First, Kelly throws a 43 yard into the end zone touchdown. Again, Kelly 45 yards to Alexander. Score is now 31-28. But Bryant's not having that. Here comes Crow with the pass to Tracy, making the game 38-28. 
St. Francis with first and goal, 11.38 on the clock. Kelly hands off to Alexander for the touchdown, scoring now 38-34. Eight and a half minutes ago, Crow throws the pass to a wide open Jordan Harris for his eighth touchdown this season. Bryant leads by 11 with a score of 45-34. Bulldogs defense holds off and Bryant wins third straight game with a score of 45-34. In this game, Mike Crow threw 278 yards and Jordan Brown ran for 243 yards with three touchdowns on the day. Game results in Mike Crow and Jordan Brown winning the NEC Co-Players of the Week. On to women's basketball now. Our Lady Bulldogs face the Iona Gales. Now this was a tough matchup for the Bulldogs at first because moving on to D1 is not that easy. And uh, it turned out to be a great game, full of turnovers though, on, on both sides of the ball. Uh, 28 by the Bulldogs, 27 by Iona, but it was still a great game to watch. Now on to women's against Iona Gales, 0-0, we're starting, here we go, Bulldogs are ready to play. <coughs> Iona takes a three right here, number 14. Iona's taking the lead, 5-4 against the Bulldogs. Bryant, pass here, pass there, that's an easy way up. 8-4 Bryant Bulldogs here, 13-13 left in the first. Meredith's over for an easy way up. Bryant with an inbound pass, gets intercepted here, and that's going to lead to an easy way up. Can't make those mistakes. Bulldogs here are looking to rebound, trying to inbound the ball here. Good inbound pass there, but tries to push up the floor a little too fast. That pass is intercepted, and this seal taken away for another easy layup. Two mistakes in the row by the Bulldogs. Bulldogs called timeout, scores 13 8, Iona. Iona takes the ball here, passes it off, shoots a three, and gets the lucky roll here. And that's not home field advantage. Iona up 18 to 12. Iona intercepts the pass here, but good D by Bryant leads to a jump off. 18 to 12 Iona, Bryant, wide open three, and it's good. Shoots a three, good rebound, better put back. Bryant in 31 to 27. Meredith Sofer averages four points a game and an assist. Here's one of your top plays of the week right here. A foot outside boys three point line, pulls it in with 31 to 30. And that's Katie Winnington who averages around 12 points a game. That's a steal, looked like Katie Winnington got poked in the eye and that leads to an easy lay by Iona, 33, 35 to 30. Iona is taking the lead 41 to 33. Nails the jump shot for the first double digit lead of the game. Bryant would sadly fall short, 66 to 53. Uh, Susie Fergosi uh, led the Iona with 60 points on the assist. Meredith Sofer uh, led the Bulldogs with 13 points, 9 rebounds, and Katie Winnington with 16 points and 2 rebounds. Again, the final score of 66 and 54. The men and women's swim teams took on the in-state rivals Providence College Friars last week. After a one-point heartbreaking loss last year, men started strong with a victory in the 200 medley relay. Bryant women Taylor DeBeaver and Molly Smith take first and second place in the women's 200 freestyle. Following the ladies' performance is Bulldog Alex Kuzinski taking first place in the men's 200 freestyle. Kuzinski would go on to have three first place finishes throughout the meet. Later in the meet, Casey Oshander led the Bulldogs to a victory in the 50 freestyle. Her performance in this meet helped her to win the NEC Athlete of the Week. With the men's team at a score of Bryant 120 to Providence 106 going to the second to last event, the Providence Friars will come back to take the first and third in the 200 individual medley, resulting in the 126 to 119 score with one event to go. It all came down to the men's 200 freestyle relay at the end of the night. The Bryant team of Cardamus, Sinclair, McGrath, and Kanitsky held off the Providence Friars with the final score of 137 to 125. The Bryant sweep of the Friars was rounded out with the women's win over the Friars with a score of 168 to 94. This weekend, the women will head to Vermont and the men will head to Boston for the Terrier Inventional. Well, I gotta tell you, I mean, the, that's a huge win for the Bryant swim team that overall, is, for men's and women's. That is so impressive. Back home, I had two friends that did swimming, 
and I was th I had no idea how yeah. they could do well, it. Well, I used to swim in high school too. Did you? I, yeah, I cannot compete with I them. Now, so I swam for <laughs> I did conditioning with them where we would run yeah. around the school for a little bit, and then I went to practice over the summer for two or three days, and then I couldn't flip turn. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> I'm yeah. not gonna do, do that. that gonna I literally spent one of the practices for at least like 40 or like 30, 40 minutes yeah. just. Flip turning and flip turning. Yeah. Finally, I got it. Come back into practice the next day. Right. I couldn't flip turn. <laughs> yeah, it was a wasted effort. Well, they sure know how to do it well. <laughs> I uh, guess they do. Beating the, the in-state rivals a huge thing. Uh, that is for men's and women's too. So. Those that those that numbers, awesome. 168 to 94, oh, like yeah. blows good, my so. mind. I, I also, a huge win by the football team. Right. Uh, they're on a roll lately. They uh, three three in a yeah, row. Like three, yeah, I mean they're coming congrats. up against. Uh, their rival Central. Central's having a not as well as a year, so I think the Bulldogs are gonna oh, take good. care of them easily. Oh, they're from so. Connecticut. That's why. Yeah, I'm so. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. Well, anyway, so we'll talk about the Hall of Fame inductees. All right, sounds All right. good. Bryant Athletes held its 16th annual Hall of Fame dinner this past Friday. Ten new members were officially inducted into the Bryant Hall of Fame, bringing the total number of members to 109 since the Hall of Fame was started in 1987. The inducted members included four All-Americans, seven Conference Players of the Year, and ten New England Honors winners, and ranged in athletes from a variety of sports such as soccer, field hockey, lacrosse, basketball, and baseball. A few of these members include basketball player Mike Williams, who was the 2005 recipient of the NCAA Sportsmanship Award, the 2005 Northeast 10 Defensive Player of the Year, and holds the current Bryant record of 301 career blocks. Max Good was Bryant's basketball coach from 2001 to 2008 and was inducted into the New England Basketball Hall of Fame in 2004. Baseball player Mike Flores was all New England in 2004 and in Bryant's all-time leader in strikeouts with 244 and complete games with 14. Rita Beckman, who played volleyball, was a three-time Northeast 10 Conference setter of the year. In addition to eight athletes that completed in the 19th in addition to eight athletes that competed in the NCAA, two Bryant alumni were inducted as legacies. Class of 1968 tennis player Andy Sundberg and class of 51 basketball player Phyllis Cincelli were outstanding athletes that competed before Bryant held records and did not get the chance to compete in the NCAA championships. Other members inducted in include 2004 graduate and women's soccer player Allison Desruch, Class of 1987 men's soccer player Mark Pearl, class of 2004 graduate and field hockey player Heidi Churagotis, and men's lacrosse 2004 graduate John Mulichkin. This year's class of former athletes and coaches span six decades of Bulldogs athletic history. Next on Bryan Sports Center, our very own Beatith Long is in the studio with sophomore wide receiver sensation Jordan Harris. Over to you, Beatith. 